we want to talk about what the Fed should be doing. And you heard a lot of talk about inflation, the effect on inflation. But let's talk about the labor markets. You heard Jan Hatzius in that, in that string say, you know, really we have improved the labor market as much as we can. Do you agree with that? Uh, you know, thanks a lot for having me on, first of all, and Happy New Year to, to both you and Alex. I, I think that uh, the evidence seems to show that there's more room for improvement in the labor market. Um, the, uh, we continue to have very strong employment um, uh, increases uh, month to month relative to what I expect to be true in, in the long run. Uh, we're you know, around 175 over the past year. I think in the long run we're going to be closer to 100, 100 per month. Uh, employment to population ratios remain low relative to what they were. Uh, so that's the fraction of people who have a job. Even if you look prime age, that fraction remains low relative to what it was 10 years ago and even lower relative to what it was at the beginning of the millennium. So I think there's room for growth and, and, and continuous uh, improvement in the labor market. So, so uh, now, you know, let's just accept that there's room for growth. Is monetary policy the way to get there? I mean, you can talk about two different things, probably more. One is participation, which you just referred to. Participation rates have not come back to where they were. Also, wages have not really shown the sort of increases we would expect at this extraordinary low unemployment rate. But is monetary policy the way to get there? Monetary policy, I think, has to play the key supporting role. So we just saw Congress pass, uh, I think, a major uh, fiscal policy bill in uh, uh, last month. And, uh, you know, that's, as uh, uh, Chair Yellen referred to in the, the, the remarks she made right before I came on, that's going to have stimulative effects on the economy. It's going to have stimulative effects on demand. So I think people are going to have more money in their pockets. They're going to spend more. And it's going to have stimulative effects on how much investment and capex is going on. Uh, those, both those kinds of stimulus, I think, are are uh, things that can lead to better growth and more demand for workers. Uh, and that's going to put upward pressure on wages. That's all positive. Uh, but the key is the Fed has to not get in the way of that. And they can get in the way of that by raising rates too rapidly. Uh, I want to uh, zero in on Charlie Evans' dissent that happened at that December meeting. He basically blamed the public's inflation expectations and how they had drifted lower. But if you come inside the Bloomberg and take a look at the two, 10, and five-year break-even inflation expectations, they're all grinding higher. Two years had a nice pop, and the 10-year now sits at about 2%. How do you justify not maintaining a rate hike cycle path? So... You know, I, I worry about the. I, I think there's still a risk out there that inflation expectations have drifted downward, as, as President Evans made made reference to. Uh, that was something that uh, was bothering me, you know, even uh, when I was on the on the, the Fed three years ago. So I I, I, I share his concern. But they're up. But, but the bigger but, issue but Nariana, is they're up. I mean, two percent ten-year break-even inflation. I mean, they're up. No, I I, I agree with that. So I, I think more you want to be focusing on where inflation is. And inflation remains low. Uh, I expect that. Uh, my own expectation is that, e e with with the new with uh, um, the appropriate stimulus uh, packages that uh, effects on stimulus that I anticipate. So meaning that we're going to see more capex, more investment. This is an expansion on the supply side of the economy. So I think this is going to represent downward pressure on inflation. That's going to be meaning that the Fed should stand by and let that kind of growth uh, filter into the economy. But, but, but one of the things I can't quite fathom here, Narayan, is why this is going to trickle down to regular workers. I mean, the one inflation we have had is asset inflation. I don't think anybody can deny that. No matter, almost, no matter what asset it is, it's inflated. But what the Fed has not been able to do is have that actually trickle down to the workers. No, I, I, I think that, first of all, you do see some increases in, in wage appreciation. But uh, obviously we want more. And I, the way to get that is to have firms competing more aggressively for workers. And wh why would they be doing that? Well, if they have to, they feel the need or feel the <laughs> desire to be building more factories, uh, building more plant, they're going to need workers to do that. If there is more demand for their goods and services because people have more money in their pockets, they're going to be hiring more workers. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be bringing people in off the sidelines even. It might just mean you're competing with each other more for workers. That will drive up wages as well. So I think the, uh, but the key to this is that the Fed can't get in the way of 
the growth impulse coming from the from the uh, from the tax bill. I want to pivot off of what Dave was talking about in terms of asset price inflation. So uh, Michael Hassentab uh, wrote in the FT uh, that failing to act now would mean delaying the great unwind until inflation and asset prices are even higher and at a later stage of the growth cycle, making the adjustment riskier. Taking away the punch bowl never makes party goers happy, but leaving it out all night can result in a far worse hangover. Uh, what's your response to that? Yeah, I look back over the data over the last, uh, uh, I just had a post this morning on Bloomberg View, where I look back over the data over the last millennium, the, uh, uh, the last 17 years or 18 years of this millennium. And I, 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 I think that the Fed has been overly cautious throughout, meaning that uh, you look at output, it's been below potential through, through much of that time period. You look at inflation, it's been below target through much of that time frame. That me that's robbing workers of bargaining power that can drive up their wages. Um, and that's, um, uh, that's an opportunity that I think the Fed could, could avail of itself of in the, in the, coming, uh, in the coming years uh, uh, to come. All right, well, coming years, that leads us to who's actually going to be in the Fed. Walk me through what you see the Fed to be in the next 365 days, meaning that what kind of minds are we going to have there? Is it going to be traditional, not, businessmen, not? Walk us through what you think. Well, that, I, 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 I think that's a, a great question. You know, I, I, uh, the one name that we've heard uh, floated out there in terms of uh, being nominated uh, to, to, the, to the Fed board is, is Marvin Goodfriend. Uh, he's an academic, uh, but certainly a person who had, has had very eclectic views over his, uh, his uh, time, both at the Fed and the academe, about monetary policy. Um, I think in the coming year, what you're going to see is a continuation. My own prediction is you're going to see a continuation of uh, what we, we've seen under Chair Yellen, which is a, a focus on gradual normalization, quote unquote, of monetary policy, meaning that they want to continue to raise rates at a slow pace. So, Noriana, there's a report actually in the Bloomberg right now about the search for the New York Fed president, suggesting that there's a real premium we put on diversity, whether it's gender diversity or ethnic racial diversity. From your experience on the Fed, how important is it in that institution to have that kind of diversity? We see it in a lot of other institutions across America where we generally think it's a good thing to have differency, different people having different points of view. Is it important for the Fed? I think it's very important for the Fed. I, I, you know, the Fed uh, is based on the idea that um, regional economic diversity, it's, it's important to capture that in the discussions about monetary policy. And, you know, that goes back o over 100 years now. I think as we move forward in time, we realize that uh, women and men uh, have experienced, had different experiences in, 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 in the economy, and uh, African Americans and whites have had different experiences. I think it's very important to have those kinds of voices around the table. Uh, I'll just pick on, on uh, the difference between African Americans and whites for, for a moment, which is that uh, systematically in recessions, African-American unemployment goes up by a lot more than, than uh, white unemployment during, uh, during recessionary times. I think it's important that that speaks to how diversity uh, of experience uh, can matter in terms of how people approach the economy.